Today, my guest is Mark Wabel. He recently launched his business, Unstuck Careers, which I am fascinated with. And he's a professional coach, instructional designer, and a professional scrum trainer. And so Mark, I am thank you for joining me today. I'm looking forward to this conversation. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for asking. So for those who haven't had a chance to have a conversation with you and get to know you, uh, talk a bit about your background, where you're from, uh, who you are, and what you do. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I think professionally, I started out uh, working in software development pretty early, uh, working help desk and at an internet provider, and then started to write some web pages. That was my first like, oh, I can solve things with technical stuff <laughs> kind of experience uh, in the work world. And that that really got me uh, excited and interested. And I found what I loved was helping people figure out what they wanted on their websites and figuring out how to get it there for them. Uh, that was back in the day of AOL, by the way, <laughs> that we were competing with, so a little, little dating there. But um, yeah, that just really got me excited about it. And I, I dug further into it, got more technically advanced beyond that uh, a bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that launched me into other things uh, beyond that, like, like the software development realm and business analysis beyond that. So uh, yeah, those were fun days. That was a lot of so fun. So is that, is that what got you interested in Scrum eventually? So yeah, my journey to Scrum, um, so if I go from the internet uh, website, internet provider, that kind of thing, what I discovered I loved about that was, like I said, helping people figure out what it was they wanted, trying to translate that into the solutions, uh, problem domain, solution domain stuff. And then um, as I went into software development, then business analysis was coming into being. So I got into that to, again, really my heart trying to help the people who were using the software right, to get value and uh, to, to improve their work lives or whatever they were using the software for. So did that for a number of years in a number of organizations and industries and so on. But there was this, this one moment I had just joined a consulting company and they said, hey, would you like to be on the Scrum team? And I kind of did that like, I don't know what that <laughs> means, but Agile sounds cool. I've heard of it before. So sure, I'll give it a run. Um, and I like to be wanted, so why not? And so I walk into the Scrum team as a minimally invasive medical device manufacturer. We were in the marketing area supporting the sales team. And um, man, I spent probably two weeks with a headache trying to figure out where my requirements document was and stuff and like which way is up. But I remember this moment. Um, it was, I want to say it was like the second sprint review, maybe. We were sitting there uh, demonstrating what we had done in the past two week sprint and having another conversation with the stakeholders. And it was just one of those like light bulb moments for me where I suddenly went, wait a minute. Uh, we just, what we said two weeks ago and we were listening to the users and the customers and what they said that they wanted more than what we did and we just did it. And now here we are showing it to them and they're giving us like, again, feedback and like we're actually hitting the mark. And that was in two weeks and uh, this is what I cared about the whole time, right? We're actually adding value and finding out what's not helpful, not valuable and doing it really quickly and having high interaction. And that, that's, I'm like, uh, I don't, still don't understand what's going on here, but this is what I want. <laughs> that's so funny. I, I don't so want to go back. Better than a two year waterfall project. Is that what you're saying? As it turns out, at least for what <laughs> I cared about. Yeah, that, that ability to get value and, um, add value to the, the users of the software. I was like, I'm sold. I like I said, I still didn't get it, but I was sold. And, uh, and that started my agile journey like 13 years ago. Yeah. Wow. So as you, as you began your career, did you follow a, uh, I mean, you mentioned kind of your early, your early work. Did you follow a traditional path and go college or did you just jump right in the workforce? How did you end up in the, in that career? So I've always had a bit of, um, technical interest and, and capability. And so when, you know, got an early, uh, early computer and 8086 processor, IBM computer, and, you know, just was fiddling around uh, doing uh, basic programming with the line numbers and go-to statements and all sorts of stuff like that. That was just interesting to me. I went to college as a music major because um, that's where I could get a scholarship. <laughs> um, and uh, discovered quickly that I wasn't so fond of, of the stakeholder <laughs> perspective of being an educator <laughs> in music. Um, and, and I found that my technical capabilities actually had come into play. So I, I combined those a little bit, with, uh, basically electronics and music and that kind of stuff. 
But what I really got into at that moment that ended up helping me in my career was um, one of my friends was in the computer science department and he said, hey, we got this thing called Unix. You want to go try that? <laughs> I'm like, uh, it seems kind of DOS-like, so sure, let's give it a run. I was writing shell scripts. Um, I was doing the predecessor to, uh, to the web, Gopher. I was creating Gopher pages. Um, and then when the web started with the lovely Mozilla web browser, <laughs> uh, I was like, ooh, graphics on a Gopher page. <laughs> right. So I, I just, I kind of got into it that way. And when I graduated, um, I basically graduated in telecommunications. And what it, it just came down to, while I loved radio, and I love technology. I was able to get a job in both at that internet provider and at radio stations. The radio stations had horrible hours and bad pay, <laughs> 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 and um, and not a not a lot of career paths, honestly. Um, it was a fading technology at the time already. So I just kind of went where it seemed like the value was and where I could make a living. And uh, so that that was really how I got into the technology realm of things. It wasn't my major, but I certainly got a lot of experience out of college that helped me in it. It's really interesting. I've met, I meet a lot of people and a number of them, a large number of them in um, technical fields have a musical background, which is yeah. really interesting. There's some matchup yeah. in terms of how you process music and or making music and then how that might translate to thinking at least the right way from a technical perspective. I've noticed that too. I, I, I believe, um, and, and I think this is more broadly accepted now than it was in years past, but I mean, software development technology in general, but especially software development is the creative endeavor, right? It's, it's, uh, it's not doing the same thing you did yesterday uh, or that someone's done, you know, in years past, it's, it's a creating something new, it's creative, it's innovative. Um, and so I think there's an artistic connection to that at least, even if it is in zeros and ones, right? <laughs> um, but I, but I have noticed too, part of it that I, I'm not quite sure about is that it's not just artistic, right? It's not like, I don't know a lot of visual artists. Um, there's a, a new, you know, a number of like poets and even more musicians. There seems to be something about the music. And I think, I think there's an intersection to me with music and math, although I don't like math, but the logic of math, <laughs> right. at least that logic aspect that it fits really well together um, and is not quite as like unbound as uh, maybe visual artists would be in that regard. So yeah, it's an interesting correlation. I'm sure someone studied it. <laughs> I'm sure somebody has. <laughs> so so um, how, how did you recently started this company? How, how did that work for you? I mean, in terms of getting off the ground and, and figuring out what you want to call yourself and then what service you're gonna, you wanted to provide. I mm -hmm. mean, naturally, yeah. it's it, look, looking at what you, what you do, it came out of work you did previously, but how did that transition really work for you? Yeah, so there's there's a few factors. It was not simple um, as any disaster is not. I'm joking. <laughs> any opportunity is not uh, not simple, and this is definitely true in this case too. So a primary motivation here for me was um, also working more in the nonprofit realm. There's a nonprofit I've been doing more work with, and I was seeking more flexibility. And so being my own boss enables me to make those trade-off decisions moment by moment when there's an opportunity that arises that I would never expect <laughs> uh, a manager, supervisor, you know, the, the Fortune 500 company I was working for to, to be able to make those trade-off decisions and, and that be a good thing for them even. So that's primarily what it was. And yet at the same time, um, the work that I've been doing um, as, in, in Agile as an Agile coach I've found, uh, and trainer, but I've, I've found that, first of all, what has been frustrating on that side of the coin is a lot of organizational change is just, hmm, in my most pessimistic moments, I'm going to say I don't see it, hmm. right? That's not fair. That's, that's a, like I say, a, a pretty um, pessimistic way of looking at it. And yet it is super hard, very long-term work. Um, and what I've come to see that not only I care about, but I also think is more impactful in those is individual human beings. It's, it's, the, it's that level of change that I think I can have an impact on um, because that's how I've been impacted as well. So that's been more of a shift in my perspective. And um, I wouldn't, I guess I'll just say that I wouldn't expect a large company to have that perspective either, right? I understand that's not typically the big money maker. Um, right. And so uh, agile coaching to me, all of a sudden I started to realize that professional coaching, like individual professional coaching sessions 
um, really, as I was learning more about those, and I'm in, in the process of getting certified, uh, accredited in that, but that really resonates with me very deeply. And so I have more opportunity to explore that and to offer that um, than I did before. And that, that's just really exciting to me to be able to have that individual uh, impact that I've received from others, including a professional coach that I can offer to others now. So that, that's just deep inside my motivation, basically. No, absolutely. And you, you know, you know, and you and I have talked about that. Uh, he, let's, I'm going to ask the question here, even though I kind of already know your answer, but I'm, I'm interested in getting it for, for everybody else. So yeah. what is the purpose of coaching? Kind of explain that yeah. because, you know, you and I have had a lot of conversation about mentoring versus coaching. Let's just stick right. to the coaching piece. What's, what, what does that look like? Well, I mean, what's, what's the reason somebody might come to you and say, Hey, I, I, I need a professional coach. Yeah. Um, that's a great question. And coaching is, uh, a widely used term that means different things in different contexts. So like take a moment, the idea of a coach in a sports context, and, and we almost need to set that aside because there's some aspects of that are, that are what I'm talking about, professional coaching and several that aren't, mm -hmm. um, or, or perceptions at least that aren't. Um, and I've had this conversation with a professional basketball coach. So it's a very interesting conversation. Um, but the, from a professional coach, coaching perspective as International Coaching Federation, ICF would define it, is really the idea that the coach is a thinking partner with you to say, you know, you're in a spot where you're trying to figure something out or find a way through something typically. Um, and you need somebody like outside your head mm -hmm. <laughs> to help you figure out what's in your head and how to get where you're trying to go. So a lot of times, um, like I've spent a fair amount of time with people who are changing careers and they're trying to figure out how to, you know, get from um, maybe the restaurant industry or from acting or something into maybe project manager, or agile, or a technology field or something. Um, and like the motive, exploring the motivations, the reasons um, for that are pretty important to understand. Is this a sustainable thing for you? Is this really going to get you where you want to go? So a lot of questions um, can help with that. And then also just how do you take a step to get there? Because you know, oftentimes that kind of thing is like an elephant. You can't eat that all at once, right? right? So how do we break that down? What's the next best step you could take to get there? And that exploration is really coaching. And the key tools in that are questions. Um, so it, I'll be honest, before I had a professional coach, I looked at that and I went, I mean, I know I love questions. My nickname's question mark for people. <laughs> I love questions and I will constantly ask them. And it still sounds a little fluffy. The coaching idea does and um you know the, the ability though, to ask those powerful questions in that moment that help help us think through things and look at things from a different perspective or even realize what we are already thinking but haven't articulated yet uh you know to put it in front of us it, it can be extremely powerful um and it has and once i received professional coaching i'm like aha <laughs> that's that's it right there. Yes. I, so I will say I would not be where I am today and I would not be, I wouldn't have launched this, uh, this new endeavor of unstuck careers without the professional coaching that I've received. So, you know, I'm not only the, <laughs> the president, I'm also the first client. <laughs> <laughs> I can give an old reference there. Yeah, that's fantastic. So what's, as you've gone through your career, what's something you have seen about the way we interact? And it could be in the business realm or, 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 what, or whatever you've seen, technical realm. What's something that we do that if, if somebody came to you, Mark, and said, Mark, today you get to make a change or you get to at least tell us mm -hmm. we should consider changing um, this. What, what would that be for you? Yeah, uh, I would I would tend to go toward no surprise based on what I've already said, the human element of things. Mm. Um, the, the technical aspects are absolutely critical for us. And at the same time as human beings, people creating a software or testing software or maintaining the systems or whatever we're doing, um, we're humans, we're not machines. And I, I've experienced and have done as well as a manager, um, many things that are not treating people as people, as human beings. Um, the, the thing, I, I always have to take a deep breath when somebody refers to a human being as a resource. Um, <laughs> I used to do that for years and I'm like, uh, I don't know what they're meaning by that. Um, for me, I've realized that um, it's, it's far too easy to consider a human being a cog in a machine. Mm. Um, and that's definitely like, 
um, anyway, that's definitely an older mindset for how people are treated. And especially when we're working on creative knowledge work that is detrimental to our end goals anyway, if I just take it to a business sense, let alone the humanity in me that's crying out, but um, it's much more effective to be treating human beings as human beings. And, um, and that means a lot of challenging things. That means a lot of unpredictable things, right? As I say, sometimes when I'm teaching, um, you know, you're looking at a team because I do a lot of still work in agile. We're trying to build these teams of people who can do creative things that are very powerful if we put them in the right conditions, right? And give them the right support and so on. And yet we can't predict everything. How can you really guess how it's going to go when yeah, I could slam a whole pizza for lunch or I could eat a salad for lunch? And that's going to completely change how I show up in the afternoon for the team right? Mm -hmm. And do the work I do and how I interact. Or I could show up in the morning and have just had an argument with my teenage boys, purely theoretical, of course. Um, I do have teenage sons, but you know, that I will show up differently within interactions that morning, depending upon whether that's happened or not. And, and then you multiply that by all the people we interact with. And that becomes really challenging. And if we pretend we're machines, that's not how machines act. Machines just show up and you just turn it on there you go. The car takes you where you need to go unless uh, eventually some part of it breaks and then you take it to the mechanic, right? We're, we're different each moment, depending on what's just happened. And um, so that's what, again, no surprise, it connects well with the other things I've said, right? That's why I love uh, coaching is bringing the most I can help expose, if you will, the potential and the opportunities and the ideas that are within people. That, that just excites me greatly. And it saddens me when that's not the case. Um, that that hurts. Hmm. That's really interesting. You know, as we begin to consider um, this whole concept of hybrid work or what does work look like post pandemic, I think there are some managers who are having to learn that they need to treat employees more as a human being because yeah. uh, the human beings are not happy with some of the decisions business are making in terms of what it looks like coming back into an office space or, or whatnot. So you're, you're, I think you're absolutely right. You yeah. hit the nail on the head that that's a, a need we have. There is clearly a balance needed, um, right? It's not anarchy, <laughs> as I like to say, where we just do whatever the heck we want to do. Um, and but I do see a movement in the business realm toward, toward this direction. Um, and and you can see it like if, how, how in the world in years past could someone like Brene Brown be as popular as she is as a business consultant to be brought in to speak about things like vulnerability and empathy mm. <laughs> what in the world. Like if you would have said that in uh, the first company, the first big Fortune 500 company I worked at out of, you know, a few years out of college, <laughs> <laughs> you've been shown the door or just laughed at, ignored something like that. And yet that she's someone who's brought into companies all over the place, because I think this realization is coming uh, that there's a balance needed. It's yes, profits and purpose and the humanity that the people that we're working with, and that's how we're gonna be successful today. Mm, that's fantastic. So so where do you see Unstuck Careers going? Where, where are you headed? I know this is a recent uh, thing for you, so I know you have great hopes. What are those hopes for, for this business? Yeah, let's start with profitability. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, it's going very well uh, for as early as it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, to me, um, uh, I'm doing a lot of scrum training uh, as a professional scrum trainer, so that's very exciting. And I'm hoping to grow the uh, professional coaching aspect of it. And as I said, I'm I'm trying to create the freedom, the flexibility to do more work with the nonprofit, which actually does a lot of work in that that space. I was speaking of vulnerability and empathy, which is why I'm very passionate about that nonprofit in particular. But um, that to me is where I see that going: is um, more helping people um, in the spots that they're at. Um, to, to be successful, to find their, their space and to get through any challenges that they're facing at that moment in time. And that's, you know, come alongside is a great phrase for how I view uh, what I do and what I hope I can also then multiply and help others learn how to do as well. So that would, that would, be, a, that would be a very great <laughs> outcome of what I've been working on, yeah. Well, Mark, uh, I look forward to seeing that because uh, which I think what you do is very needed. Uh, for how uh, we learn to be people and how we interact with one another. So I'm, I'm anxious to see how that, that works uh, going in the future for you. So thank you for coming on the podcast today. This has been fantastic. Oh, yeah, it's been great. Thanks for having me. All right. <laughs> really appreciate it.